I'm Drew Regan, I'm the Stevens Point Fire Marshal. I'm here with Shane Westfall, Portage County Paramedic, and Ben Schultz, he's another fire investigator here with me at the Stevens Point Fire Department. And we're here with you today talking about oxygen fires caused from smoking. Um, you wouldn't think that these are a, a common problem here with smoking uh, declining across the U.S., but turns out they are a common cause of fire across the U.S. and in the Stevens Point community. Um, annually, the U.S. has about 70 deaths due to smoking and home oxygen fires, and they also cause over 1,200 injuries per year. On top of injuries, they're a huge cause of property loss and high value um, and high percentage property loss where most homes involved in a home oxygen or smoking oxygen fire, um, up to 40% of those homes are completely destroyed. So today we have set up with you uh, a few demonstrations to show you the dangers of smoking with oxygen. Um, we have some tips on how to protect yourself if you do use oxygen in the home. But let's start off with Shane here to kind of explain uh, why we have oxygen in our homes, what the medical uses for oxygen are, and kind of give us an overview. Certainly, thanks Drew. So first of all, it, it really is important to know what oxygen is. And as many of us know from our basic chemistry classes, you can find it on the table of elements. And the oxygen we breathe is actually two oxygen molecules together, hence why it's called O2, oxygen with two molecules. Well, first of all, we need oxygen to sustain life. And so when somebody has a, a illness or some sort of medical problem that inhibits the absorption of oxygen into the bloodstream and thus inhibiting perfusion of that oxygen to the vital organs, it can cause major problems, even up to death. This is why many people with COPD or asthma or emphysema are on home oxygen to maintain that higher level of oxygen in their bodies because their current illness does not allow their body to maintain the proper oxygen level. A good oxygen level for a human being should be above 95% oxygen. And so a lot of these medical conditions actually inhibit that percentage and you'll, you'll find people with oxygen in their 80s and even 70s. And it doesn't take long um, with a decreased oxygen level for somebody to have um, a decreased mental um, state. And so it's very important that oxygen is used for many people with these illnesses. So it's an important medical thing. We carry it safely on the ambulance. Yes. People have it in their homes. Yep. It's something we're using every day. So it is safe to use and we do need it medically, correct? correct? correct. Okay, got it. So now that we have that out of the way, we'll do some demonstrations. We'll talk about oxygen from the firefighting standpoint. So oxygen itself isn't inherently flammable. What oxygen does is it chemically aids things that are flammable in burning. So to demonstrate that, we will remove a short piece of oxygen tubing. So this is the same type of oxygen tubing that you would find in a healthcare setting in the US. And now this does not have any oxygen flowing through it. So what we'll show with a simple lighter is that the oxygen tubing will burn, but when the flame is removed, it self extinguishes. So it's not a good combustible piece of plastic. The plastic will self extinguish and go out. Now, what we'll show you with later on with that tubing is when oxygen is applied, the tubing will rapidly combust. And that's because we're increasing the oxygen in that tubing. So oxygen in normal air around us is about 21%. When we increase that oxygen percentage to 90 or 100%, it affects the chemistry of that material and aids in that combustibility. So we call that the fire triangle. To have a fire burn, we need to have three things, oxygen, heat, and fuel. So by taking that one side of the fire triangle and increasing it, the oxygen side, we're making that fire oxidizer burn rapidly, much more than it would in a normal air. So to demonstrate a cigarette burning, We'll light this one and we'll introduce extra oxygen to it. So what I'll do is I'll get the cigarette burning and I'll use my mouth to blow extra oxygen at a normal rate through the cigarette. You may see more smoke, but the cigarette isn't going to change its burning characteristics. So as I blow through it, I'm putting a normal amount, 21% actually less because it's been in my lungs through the cigarette. So try as I might, blowing as hard as I can, the cigarette does not change. So now we have that cigarette burning. Now with the oxygen flowing, you can see the cigarette rapidly oxidizes and combusts. 
until the oxygen is removed. As soon as the oxygen is removed, that cigarette either goes out or returns to a normal burning phase. So as you can see, with having these cigarettes and these oxygen sources close to our face, we're going to get a high amount of injuries or high severity injuries because of that rapid burning. Oxygen also, when you're using it near your face where oxygen is usually applied, it can saturate your hair, clothes, you can have a higher oxygen concentration around that area which will increase the flammability of your clothes, our hair, your body, any kind of accessories, furniture around us and cause those severe injuries. So we'll move on now to our demonstration uh, dummy that we have to show how oxygen actually reacts with a nasal cannula on and can affect clothes, hats and heads and also see what the tubing looks like burning with that increase in added oxygen. So here we have a common setup of someone who would be smoking with oxygen. So this may be outside in a home, um, in a wheelchair. There's no safe setting to be smoking with oxygen. Um, it can affect your clothing. You can see we're in an open air environment here. There'll be a drastic change in the burning conditions of the cigarette, which will ultimately affect our test dummy's face and clothes here. So what we'll do is we'll light the cigarette and I will turn on the oxygen source, which will introduce that oxygen through the nasal cannula onto the cigarette. And that's where we'll start to see that rapid oxidizing and chemical burning reaction take place that will move onto the dummy. So Ben, I'll have you light the cigarette first. Okay, so now we have the cigarette burning. We will turn the oxygen on. And as you can see, the oxygen tubing will continue to burn with the oxygen on. This is why we have severe property damage. That oxygen will actually follow the tubing all the way across the carpet and back to whatever source is feeding that oxygen, whether it be a bottle or an oxygen concentrator in the home. And you can see many of these devices that wouldn't burn very well, such as a hat or cotton clothing, also burn rapidly due to the oxygen concentration being introduced. And you can see that also the burning of this other material causes dripping, which can spread fire onto other articles of clothing or into the uh, home or carpet or chair, wherever the cigarette was being smoked. Yep. So as you can see here, the damage is severe. Um, we have damage to the face, damage to the clothes. We had a fire that would have followed that oxygen tubing back down to the combustibles on the floor and ultimately started the home on fire. So Shane, being a paramedic, can you explain um, why these burns are so severe, especially when they're located around the face? Yeah, so within your mouth and in your nose, you have uh, mucous membranes and it's a very um, fragile tissue. And so if that tissue becomes burned or seared or really hot, it starts to swell. And so thus, when you are trying to breathe, your airway can start to swell and actually close up within minutes. And so it's, it's utterly important, especially if we have a, a victim that we pull out, that we intubate them as soon as possible to make sure that we can, can breathe for them um, before their airway actually swells up. Shane, are burns to the face area, do they have a high survivability rate? Is there any kind of specialty care? Is that something that we can take care of here in Stevens Point? Or what does the care look for like that? Or no, if you, have, if you have severe burns to the face or severe burns in, in many parts of your body, um, you'll have to be taken to a burn center, like specifically down in Madison. Okay. And generally we see those deaths associated with, with facial burns. It's a high mortality sure. rate, especially sure. as you start gaining age. Um, the older patients do fairly worse than younger patients. Yes, right? yep, and certainly. And oxygen, just in general, when you have a fire on your face, um, you're breathing in a lot of um, bad chemicals too, from the from the rubber tubing, the, the plastic tubing, I should say, that's burning. And, and the so smoke coming off of the, the jacket. The smoke coming off the jacket everywhere. and things. So that can also damage your lungs and your airway. Okay. So luckily there are ways that we can prevent these fires in the home. If you have oxygen in the home, family members using oxygen in the home, there is no safe place to smoke around that oxygen. Like we said, there are oxygen rich environments, not necessarily just coming from the tubing, but also coming from the atmosphere around that oxygen user. As for mechanical devices, um, there are things called oxygen fire breaks that you can purchase from a medical supplier or your oxygen supplier. And these are physical devices and valves that go in line with the oxygen tubing that will break open if there is a oxygen fire and cut off the flow of that oxygen. 
So we recommend those um, at any of the tubing junctions in your home. Uh, we rec recommend those right at the source of the oxygen, whether it be from a oxygen concentrator machine you may have or from an oxygen bottle. And Shane, are there any other ways that you can mark your home for oxygen use or anything like that? Yeah, there are commercial signs out there that you can buy that says oxygen in use. Like if you're in an apartment complex, it's good to put one of those signs on the door so people know that there's oxygen being used in that apartment and not to walk in with a cigarette. And so it's important to, to let people know that you are using oxygen. Um, because it is for your safety and for everybody else's safety. But these are preventable fires. They certainly are, and we can prevent them. As you said, the easiest way to prevent them is to not have, not smoke or use um, flammable items in the oxygen environment. And these fires do happen in Stevens Point as well. Over the last few years, we've had several smoking fire deaths, um, both from flame sources such as stovetops uh, igniting the oxygen tubing as well as cigarettes. So this is something that we can all practice and be aware of in the Stevens Point area and Portage County as well. Correct. All right, well thanks for the good lessons on oxygen use. We hope everybody's safe. As always, if you have any questions on fire prevention, how to be safe in your home, uh, if you would like us to come check out your oxygen uh, situation or use, we're more than happy to make a home visit and advise you on how to do that safely.